A very good evening and welcome once again to Terrace Talk and a fine evening here in the town of Tralee. I'm sure it's the same. What a beautiful day we had here. What a beautiful weekend we've had as well. A victory yesterday in Hyde Park for our Kerry team who reach a National League final uh, next Sunday in Crow Park, uh, part of a triple header on that. And the game's on at 4pm and Radio Kerry will broadcast live that game. Of course, it's been a very busy weekend in the basketball front. Great victory for Garvey's Tralee Warriors. Uh, winning the Super League and uh, what a hectic weekend travelling to Dublin for the first of those two games and what an atmosphere they tell us uh, in the Tralee Sports Complex yesterday afternoon and I take it they're still celebrating I have three uh, members of that uh, successful front uh, between the sponsors, uh, one of the team players and the team managers here in studio tonight. Also tonight uh, we speak to uh, Kerry's professional boxers, of course, uh, Mick Kerry man Kevin Cr- uh, Cronin, about to make his professional debut on Saturday night and Kilcummins Siobhan O'Leary having the second pro fight of her career. Also tonight, we'll have uh, Kerry underage soccer players here in studio who are competing at National League. We should have Brian O'Regan, of course, is involved with the under 19s, uh, Ryan Gear on the other under 17 level, Connor Kearns under 15, Nathan Ahern under 13, and likewise Andrew Kearns, who's under 13 as well. We also speak to Shane Finn. Uh, he's a man that, uh, well, takes on a lot of big tests. Well, he's going to be running and cycling across the USA in 36 days, the West Kerry man. And, uh, well, we heard about his 24 marathons in 24 days. And what a man. And again, it's all about charities and all about the great work he's done later on in the programme. We'll be hearing from him. And if you've been to any of those sporting events over the weekend, uh, you can contact us here on Terrace Talk. You can call us on 066 7123 666, text in 083 300 3300. Uh, Terrace Talk on Facebook or tweet at Terrace Talk RK. Terrace Talk at Radio Kerry.ie. And where we start tonight, that great victory for Garvey's Trail. Warriors uh, winning the Super League and I'm delighted to have in studio uh, I suppose the Hall of Fame man Jimmy Diggins who's team manager likewise one of the young players that gave an exhibition yesterday afternoon uh, Rap Bevidas uh, of course the youngest player on the team at 17 years of age and Jim Garvey of Garvey's group you're all very welcome to Terrace Talk lads Thanks Tim uh, Jimmy, I'll start with you. Um, you've been had many a great day with local teams and teams at different levels. Uh, how did this measure with the rest of the performances over the years and the victories, yesterday's victory uh, for, for Garvey's? Well, Tim, I'm 45 years in the game at this level and this weekend has been the best that I can remember in my lifetime. That game, Saturday night in Dublin, the way the boys fought to win that game. I have never witnessed anything. This is something that you'll be talking about for the next 50 years, maybe. The, the young fellas themselves, you know, it's like a, a, an All-Ireland, all, all Kerry playing in All-Ireland. We played the Dubs, UCD Marion, who were just uh, uh, two points behind us and they needed victory and we had to get that victory. And we said that going up, that we needed to win Saturday to be comfortable for Sunday. And that gave you, I suppose, the psychological uh, advantage coming back into Tralee. On it, it did. Well, and we knew that during the week. We put all our eggs into the basket. We travelled up Friday night. We did great preparation, rest, recovery, to come back down on Sunday. And we just played in the first half on Sunday. We just blew them out of it. We were 20 points up. We were surprised ourselves, actually, because we had a lot of injuries going into that game Sunday. We were without Doosan. We were without Kendall. And we were... Uh, and we had um, Paul Dick strapped up as well. And we just played unbelievable basketball in the first, twin, the sure, first half. Sure, great character. Great uh, character. Jim Garvey, I take it you were in, they took the long trip to Dublin. Uh, how did you measure that performance in Dublin? I did, Tim, yeah. And I was, look, as I was saying to Jimmy, it was, it was a privilege to be there on Saturday. It was just absolutely fantastic. I suppose you had to be there to realise just the, the situation they were facing when... All their star players were gone and you were left with Donny here and this guy beside me rapping and, and uh, you know, three other Tralee three guys on the floor, young fellas mostly, you know, the two of Sullivan's from the castle, you know, Owen Quigley and that's what was left. And you were saying, you know, there was really no hope for them with three minutes to go. I think they were down 12 points. I think with, with 30, 40 seconds to go, they were down seven points. And then 
in fairness, you know, and I'm sure we'll talk about it, but Donahue won a ball there, you know, with, with 30 seconds ago and just seemed to change it. And it just like, all of a sudden... It was like Dara down in Limerick winning it under the crossbar, the same yeah, sort of was, impact. It was, yeah, and just saw on social media there, I think Kieran Shannon was talking about Donahue and his influence on it and saying, look, it was up there with, with Limerick, the game in the Gaelic Grounds against Mayo, going back to 14, and he's talking about another basketball win that Kieran had. But he said, Saturday night, Kieran Donahue surpassed. It was just fantastic. And the way the lads here responded in rap and as a spectator it was just a privilege to be there you know Well rap you're very welcome to Tara's Talk uh, what does it feel like to be the youngest member of such an experience and he mentioned Kieran Donny playing with these guys you're you're a young boy that's still is it fifth year going to the CBS here yeah, in Tralee yeah. uh, what was it like going in to call into the camp and, and get involved with these guys Unreal, like, I was uh, involved with the under 16 Irish team and it was like all the lads all the experience just brought me in very closer to the game like did they I take it you were headhunted to get involved with Trelly Warriors the likes of Jimmy he knows a decent basketballer when he sees them uh, I take it you were approached to come on board oh yeah so I played for honestly Brendan's under 16 as, uh, as soon as I was old enough I just went straight to the Warriors and tr- started training with them it was a natural progression uh, did you play in both games over the weekend uh, yeah I played a few minutes in the first game I think a good few minutes yesterday and what, what did that for, for such a young man to I suppose sample that sort of or experience that sort of atmosphere what was that like it was unreal yeah uh, you didn't experience it at underage level I take it playing you, you know it's obviously different the game's a lot faster at senior level it was way faster yeah everyone's moving fast just big bodies as well what height do you stand at? Uh, six foot five. And you're only 17? Yeah. There's probably another few inches in him, is there, Jimmy? Well, his career, I'd say, has taken off this weekend. We always knew he was a great player. Uh, he has come through the ranks of uh, club basketball, which is very strong in Trelino with St. Brendan's. He's a member of St. Brendan's. We also have uh, Daryl Canelli, who's a member of the Imperials. They're both on the Irish under-18 panel this year, going out in the European Championships. They're down to the last 15. I would be very confident that both of them would make it. Uh, they're great competitors. They love the game of basketball. They're great kids, great for the young kids coming up. When rap goes on the court, the fans in the stands just call rap, rap, rap. And to, to earn that sort, obviously they know that there's a talent about, no different to Kieran Donaghy. He, he got that name star when he was very young. Yes. Uh, because obviously he was starring in games. So yes. this young man could carry, without putting too much pressure on him, could he be the future, Kieran Donaghy? Oh, they're the future. They're the future. These kids are coming up through the ranks at the moment are the future of basketball in Tralee. And it's very, very strong in Tralee. And the underage programme now all over Kerry is huge at the moment. But it comes from the like, as you said, Kieran Donaghy, the star. They look up to him. They want to play with him. They want to follow in his footsteps. The the kids just love him after games. He's there for them, and, he, and then this is this is what this is the beauty. It's a family occasion, you know. And uh, Garvey's came on board, and the family. Uh, we just love to see the crowd up there. Yeah, it's definitely love de- to see the crowd definitely up getting there. huge crowds. In the crowd. uh, Jim, can I before we talk about yesterday's game? Can we talk about Gar- Garvey's connection with the the spot? We talk him sponsor, but he mentioned family there. But we always we say, and I know it well myself that Garvey's pride itself in community. But what did you see? Why did you want to get on board with um, the Warriors? Yeah, I suppose. Look, even thinking about it today, Tim, I think when Tralee Tigers won the league in 1995. Would have been sponsored at that stage. So we're sponsoring basketball in Kerry probably 24, 25 years. And even after the match yesterday, one of the first texts I got was from Donald O'Connor from St. Mary's in Castle Island, which we involved as well. And also, like, we're involved in the Imperial. So we'd have a great connection ourselves uh, with basketball down the years. And, um, you know, I think from a sponsor's point of view, it's just such a brilliant. Um, sport to be involved in you know what I mean I think this from the sponsorship point of view and what attracts us really to the, what, what Jimmy and Rap are doing up with the Warriors is just it's a sense of the community a sense of family um, I think everybody would say look that that the town of Tralee is on a high after it you know and, and the way they've they've brought it is a family night and what a fantastic night's entertainment even yesterday you now you had Liam O'Connor playing before the match and, and at half time and just the place was rocking up there it was just fantastic and from a sponsor point of view look it's just you're delighted to be involved with something like that, you know. But for somebody like your your dad, Tomas, um, and a, a man that's uh, I suppose given to the community with years, he he gets it from the community, he gives it back. What makes your decision? What makes that final decision for you? Because I'm I'm sure that out there uh, you could be, for want of a better word, you could be plagued by sponsorship. But obviously, you have to do your research from a business point of view as well, Jim. 
Well, look, it's it's quite simple. It's people like Jimmy across the table from me and, and uh, in fairness to Terry O'Brien as well and, and even to Kieran Donaghy, right? They're really good people to be involved in. And same equally, I'd always say that about St Mary's out in Castle Island. You know, you've Liz Galway out there and Morris Casey. And again, they're fantastic people to be involved in. And they, they really do their best for you as a sponsor. Do you know what I mean? And they really promote your business. And look, you can see all the players a whole shop with us you know and, and uh, you see like Jimmy every morning coming in and you know you'd have a chat with him and it's that kind of relationship you've built with them and it's, it's a relationship about people like anything else and, and look if you've very good people in clubs like that you know you're, you're, you're more than happy to get involved with them you know what I mean because you have that relationship there with them and they support you and that's, that's so important uh, Rap, can I ask you about your, your training? What's it like uh, what's a day in the life of a, a being a Trelly warrior a Garvey's warrior for want of the best of the word So the stuff you, you just you show up to training do a light warm up and just train like train train yeah. hard and that's really something hard. we want to mention that we haven't mentioned him yet Talk, tell us about we know the team manager here at your left what about your coach coach Pat Price has been great all the season long he just encourages you all the time no, no bad words about you just and a man that came on board with huge experience as well that that can only further your development yeah and all the all the all the other players as well, even the older fellas, you gain experience from Coach Price. Like, and you would have experienced all this atmosphere as well, because I take it uh, Trilly CBS had played Mount Hawk earlier this year, and everyone was speaking about it. it was hugely uh, electric atmosphere there. It was a brilliant game, and uh, well, you'd have experienced what you'd experience in the complex as well. Yeah, it was a brilliant game. I'm sure, some people were there watching the game. It was just unreal experience as well. Unreal, uh, Jimmy. Um, we talk about basketball in Tralee. Jim mentioned for a number of years that Garvey's have been sponsored. Why was there such a drop off then? With you know, it was only this. Uh, I suppose club is basically in its infancy mm. uh, with the last three years, and suddenly they provide uh, a, a Super League title. Um, it happened fast, but why was there such a drop off for a time as well? well I suppose um, Tigers kind of finished up, and um, the GA were very lucky to get two great basketball players in Michal Quirk and Kieran Donahue. And that left a void in, in town of Tralee for basketball players. And the structure at underage wasn't there in Tigers. They had a kind of Super League team. So we got together four years ago and we put a plan in place. And we were saying that we would have to come together as Tralee team. And Kieran and the guys from uh, Brendan's and Imperials, we met and sat down and had a few meetings. And we all bought into it. And we said if we had to get it back to the level that it was at, that would have to be a Tralee team and the two clubs feeding into it. The underage, and Rap could tell you, the underage players now that are coming through the system, we have five or six more players to come into the squad next year, 18, 19 year olds. And uh, they're just waiting to get in. They were on the fringe this year. And but we only select uh, 12 for games. But they're about uh, 14, 15 and 16 players and there's more want to come in as success, well. Breeds success, breeds so success. Success, success yes. breeds success. And as Jim said, then you have young families coming up and the kids are there. They're out on the floor bouncing basketballs. They want to go to camps. They want to... Just underage basketball now in the town of Tralee is just grown out of all proportions. So that's why I'm happy that this it will be successful. This will last this time because you have the underage players coming up. Jim, uh, looking at social media today, reading the papers, listening to it here on, on Radio Kerry, something great has happened, Kerry and Trilly. And that's the, there were genuine and, and honest words from people sending in text to Radio Kerry today and people you meet on the street. Uh, this is something that must be embraced because we see the atmosphere and you, I suppose it's winning, I suppose, breeds that as well. But there's something more than that, isn't there? I think there is, yeah. I think there's something more fundamental here than just basketball. I think it's the town of Trilly. And, uh, you know, I think there's a huge level of goodwill about where the town is going. And, and certainly, I think the basketball club here in Chile has been a centre point of that. And this thing on Saturday night at the complex now has become a huge social occasion, a gathering together of people. You know, it's family occasion. It's something that parents and kids can do with each other. So from that perspective, you know, I think it's... Uh, it's really a start of something and I think it's more fundamental than basketball and, uh, you know, just the amount of well-wishers today um, you know, and the amount of text messages coming in it for, for, the, for the lads in basketball club as, as, as well as, as everybody else. It's phenomenal. And the way, I think what they've done successfully this year is they have a committee up there that the work seems to be very well divided and split and nobody seems to be getting, you know, a huge amount of work to do and, you know, it's well divided and the nights are brilliantly organised and then you get such a welcome up there on the nights, on Saturday nights and Sundays, you know, it's fantastic. And, uh, it's a happy it, it, place it, to be. It's a happy place to be. I think Kieran Donnie was telling the story, I think, that 
that the last time three Tigers won in 1995, I think he was up till one o'clock that night in the morning playing basketball outside his house. And I suppose that's the club we're looking for. If, is that to happen again? And another rap coming through, you know, the, sure the experience on the. Do you know? I think that's what that's what they're trying to achieve. Mm-hmm. And I think you know. Yeah, great stuff. Uh, of course, Jimmy Rapp and Jim Garvey are going to stay with us. Uh, before we take a break, uh, just uh, I'd like to say to listeners, if you were at any sporting event over the weekend, please contact us tonight. It's been a great a weekend uh, for Kerry, and let's hopefully uh, look forward to next weekend. It'll be in the same measure. Uh, we've plenty more after this break. Terrace Talk on Radio Kerry, brought to you in association with BrianJames.ie, leading the way for stylish menswear in Kerry. Indeed, you're very welcome back here to Terrace Talk. I have in studio uh, Jim Garvey, I've uh, Rap Bevidas, and likewise uh, Jimmy Diggins as we speak about the great victory uh, for the Garvey's Trilly Warriors over the weekend. Those texts coming through to us. Uh, Hi Tim, what the Warriors did in Dublin must rank as one of the greatest comebacks in Kerry sport. What Kieran Donaghy did in the last four minutes has rarely been seen on a basketball court. And that comes from Porrick Hartnett. And thank you Porrick for that. Um, Rap, I, I'll go back to you for a sec. You, you're, you're a very modest young man you're not telling me you had a big say in the game in Dublin on Saturday night uh, did you get a massive rebound towards the end of that game yeah I got a massive rebound Danny was very excited about it I tell you and, and what's it like that when you do something like that and to see Kieran Donny from what he's achieved and he'll congratulate you uh, he'll tell you you've come of age I take it yeah the question as well just tell me you did your job well done and just move on to the next game and what was the feeling then for the for the team as a whole coming off um, the court up in Dublin and you're facing in a, into a game less than 24 hours later uh, the confidence must have been high coming down on that bus or whatever did, did Jim Garvey fly you up no? <laughs> no it was a bus was it? <laughs> yeah it was a bus you, you came down the bus the confidence must be high yeah everybody was excited for the game on Sunday and we showed up on Sunday then the did not show up. Used to do, did not. And did you feel you had that advantage then? That that psychological thing, getting that they expected to win that, and especially yeah. the way the way the game uh, in that th- uh, final quarter was thrown out, and suddenly, for want of a better word, you stole it from them. Yeah, of course. We we obviously had advantages coming into Sunday, home crowned as well. They, they were not ready for us. Were you in bed early Saturday night? You were. I was. Yeah. Resting those long legs of yours, <laughs> um, Jimmy. W- Going into the game then, what was the feeling from a management point of view on Sunday morning? On Sunday morning we were very, very confident. I said it all week that Saturday night, if we could win Saturday night, we'd have the upper hand in on, on, on UCD Marion. Because they were on their home court Saturday night, they had everything to play for. If they won Saturday night, they'd have tied, make it, made a three-way tie. Uh, because they were only two points behind us. So we, stealing that game, we were up, up for the next day in. Basketball, it's a very emotional game. Guys are high, you know, they're, they're so intense and when they get rebounds or make baskets for each other, they're always giving each other high fives or pumps and they're encouraging each other the whole time. So when we got that victory in Dublin, we came out, we were jumping out of our skins. We, were just, we just wanted to play the next day. And was it more the same from whatever tactics you used on, on Saturday night? Obviously, these the UCD demons would know you quite well on the court, individuals as a, as a group. Yeah. Did you try different tactics on Sunday? Well, we had to adjust on Sunday because we didn't have Doosan. Doosan oh, big a loss was he? Oh, he scored 19 points. And uh, he had uh, double, double, double. He had uh, rebounds and he had 19 points Saturday night. He was a huge loss to us. And that was a worry for us. It was a worry for us. But uh, Pat had great faith in the team all year long. And especially our Tralee players. He encouraged them and he got but the best he, out of he them. He obviously knew that he'd depend on the trail. Oh, yeah. Because did you finish the game with five Tralee players? Five Tralee players. Yeah, that was young that was, that was five Tralee players. We finished with the two, the Sullivans and uh, Rapp, uh, Skinny, uh, Darrow Hanlon and Kieran Starr. Uh, Quicks had fouled out as well. So we had one of our starting five left in the overtime. That was Kieran, And uh, they just pulled together the, the, this Tralee crowd they just walked their socks off and they they had their full squad still on the court they had nobody fouled out you see Demar had his full squad of players to, to call on but you I tell you Tim you just could not uh, write it you could not write the script as Jim said you could not write the script the boys just fought for every ball it was just like the, the ball that they're talking about Donny was marking Meany Meany's their top scorer right and we were Level, I think, at the stage. Yeah, no, we were, we were, uh, we were, we were a pint down, and uh, he took him on at just over the halfway line. Your man was dribbling the ball. How old is Kieran Donahue now? We'll be thinking he's about thirty-five. 
we'll give him 35, 36. <laughs> but to have that appetite. Appetite. To, that. to take that guy on. And if he fouled him, that guy would have gone to the line for two free throws. But he, he reversed the road. He took the ball from him. He took him on. Took him on. And he fouled Kieran. And Kieran went to the line. It's amazing. Amazing. Right. Great, great story. Great story. Uh, Jim, is that a compliment then to the, the management that you can finish with five, uh, be it Irish based players or Tralee based players, uh, to finish a game? To, to, for the, the management to embrace what he has with these players, knowing that this could actually happen? Tim, I'll be the first to say I know very little about basketball, right? But to be there on Saturday night, you know, to see the great Surely you're by going to every game now, you're learning a bit as you go along, Jim. Jimmy's trying to teach me there, but look, it'll be while yet, I think it'll be while yet. But it was Did they ever have a basketball team in Dingle that you got involved? The fo- well, you the didn't go to the convent. No, the five fouls just caused me a bit of trouble. <laughs> yeah. The five fouls just caused <laughs> me a bit of trouble. But no, it was just the way they fought back. It was just phenomenal. And anybody, if you weren't a follower of basketball, you couldn't but be enthralled by what happened on Saturday night and how they responded. Can I can I ask about the whole carnival atmosphere of it, Jim? You know that I think Liam O'Connor was up there with his car. He was up obviously with the last couple of weeks with, with Kerry playing in Osterstag Park. But that carnival atmosphere, the music, and like Jimmy says, the the emotion of the whole thing it's it's it, it's huge. And to experience that is brilliant. Yeah, it is. Like like we were selling tickets in the shop in Rock Street uh, for the last two games. And and the the crowd filled the entire aisle all the way down from the checkouts down to the bottom of the aisle. It was phenomenal. I uh, hope the aisles look well now when they were. The aisles looked well, and all I could see was there was a bit of social media going on about the queues, <laughs> which isn't a good sign. But it was for just the basketball. The good tickets. complaint. Yeah, good it complaint. was a good complaint. Yeah. And uh, in fairness, even all the players were queuing for tickets. I mean, Fergus was, was in the queue for tickets. I think Kieran Donnelly was in the queue for tickets at one stage. Um, it was just the demand, and the phones were just. But you can you can manufacture that, Jim. Though that's no. that sort of thing that you know that. The buzz that was in Trolley. It, it was like preparing for a, an All Ireland final. It was, but the community were so bought into it. And I think, in particular, what they really connected to was young people, um, and young people going up to the complex on a Saturday night and, and getting into the ba- game of basketball. And it's something really positive for Tralee Town and, and 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 for the club. And I think you know the effort they made uh, to put on entertainment on the night. So even if you went in, if an hour beforehand, you get into the complex at least an hour, if not an hour and a half beforehand. I think the game tipped off at five o'clock yesterday. Somebody told me there was a queue there at two o'clock. Mm-hmm. So there were people queuing from two o'clock before the complex opened at five. But once you go in, the whole entertainment is organised. They have music. They have people coming out doing shows. They have Liam O'Connor. You just, it's just fantastic. Jim, can we get an exclusive on Terrace Talk tonight? There's, is there a commitment by Garvey Super Value for the next season or the season? How long is it going to go on for? That's now, a good question. You're, you're in before the rest now, Jim. <laughs> yeah. They're, you're Super League champions. Um, I take it Garvey's will be involved. Are you sure you couldn't call it anything other than Garvey's now? I, well, I think I have to be asked now. I think there's a queue going out the door now, I think, <laughs> to, be, to, be, to be sponsored after the weekend. But I'm hanging on to the article. It was an independent on Saturday, so I'll, I'll bring that with me when I meet Terry for, the, for negotiations. <laughs> but it's, it's good for both parties that Garvey's... I, I, I think you couldn't call... Even when... I suppose going back to the Tigers' time, uh, Jimmy, that it was always known as Garvey's Tigers, wasn't it? Garvey's have been unbelievable sponsors to basketball. I met Jim four years ago and asked him would he sponsor a ladies' national league team in the Imperials and it was just getting it off the ground. And I had no bother meeting with Kevin and Jim and they came on board. And I was really kind of getting them set up for this big one. You know, I said there's something big coming down the road and if you get in now, you have a chance of getting the big gig, you know. So, <laughs> but I didn't think it was going to be this big, Tim. Honestly, I didn't think it was going to be this big. It's just taken off completely. Will you do me a favour? We mentioned your backroom team. I want to want, because these guys, there's there's unsung heroes. Yeah, we always hear about beat the coach yourself. Yeah. you'd be well known. Yeah. tell me about the rest of the management team. Well, we meet from September to March once a week, either Monday night or Tuesday, in Terry O'Brien's house. Eleven of us, and there's eleven of us there, and we plan for the whole week and for the next game of the season. But we can call on at least thirty to forty people to help us out, stewarding, doing the shop, doing, doing the um, pop lane shower, men charge of the floor above. And it's just anyone that we want to call him will help us out. With the committee, are uh, very, very good, very level-headed. Uh, we don't have to vote on anything. Everything is a, a compromise. We, we talk through and we, we do the best for the players. We do the best for the team, do the best for the coach, do the best for the sponsors. And we do the best for the people at Tralee Town. But uh, I just, I couldn't see coming back to this, Tim, 
in, in just three years. It has blown me out of the water, really. There's no... It's blown me out of the water. It's very hard to go higher than this. What about a uh, cup? Yeah. Will that, Jim that, Garvey put pressure on you that, to win a cup? I, I hope he does. And I'll put pressure back then on the players and the coach. <laughs> very well. I, I think, is, is your coach staying on with uh, Pat? Like, like Jim said, that's his... Uh, be negotiating it's the next two or three weeks. I suppose today is not but a day. But if you're, the, the day is not a day for all that type of stuff. Yeah, we'll celebrate today as well. no harm yeah. to hint it. Oh, Rab, yeah. Rab, I take it this will increase your standing as well representing Ireland nationally. Are you part of an Irish squad? Yeah, Irish under 18 squad. Great as stuff. And is there anybody else from so Derek, locally? Yeah, Derek Nelly and Leroy. Right. Where yeah. are these boys from? They play where's, for... Where's Dara from? Is he from? He's from camp. Oh, he's from camp? Yeah, Lear's from Trilly. Very close to our producer, Eamon Hickson. So that's brilliant for you as well, going forward. Um, did, and what, what position do you play? Play centre or power forward. And you can... Obviously, you're, you're, you're a player that can operate up and down that court with ease. Yeah. And of course, your height, six foot five. Jim, wouldn't you love to be six foot five? Uh, Jim, going forward, we mentioned the we are hopping a ball, I, I suppose, about sponsorship, but... It can only grow basketball in Trilly after all this. Ah, yeah, look, it's it's and it's down to people like Jimmy. Do you know what I mean? And and the drive he's given basketball, I think, in the forty years he's been do, doing it. You know, and it's people at the ground. Can you level. give a fella Hall of Fame twice? Uh, Jimmy would argue he's too young for Hall of Fame. But he's <laughs> yeah. definitely going to qualify again in a couple of years' time. So he's. Uh, he, he's but these so, guys he's, know their stuff as well. They 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 were brought up with basketball and they live for it. That that's their game, isn't ah, it? Ah, is yeah. And even John Dowling now would be very much involved with Jimmy. He's involved up in Mount Hawk, I believe, and doing huge work at, at grassroots level to promote basketball in the town with Jimmy. I hope know? John Dowling listening because he, he's speaking to the master. <laughs> he's speaking to, to, to Jim Diggins. I think he knows that. Uh, yeah. uh, Jim, we said about going forward, and as just as mentioned there, and it's good for the town of Tralee uh, but the community thing is all about we mentioned about Garvey's group they also sponsored uh, the senior football and hurling championship in Kerry and uh, I, I suppose you do get mileage don't you because these games are it's a long journey no different to what the boys had and when there's huge success it means a lot because it's been a brilliant county football and senior championship as well last year isn't it yeah, look, it's 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 part of what we do. It's it's the local piece. It's it's the community piece, and certainly the GA piece would be very close to us in 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 terms of our you know our own hobbies and stuff like that. We're very involved at local clubs ourselves, and uh, you know we find a lot of similarities between the the senior county championship now as well and the basketball and just the success they have. And you know the GA resonates with people all over the county. You know, and we're delighted in Garvey's to be involved in both and and looked at both great sponsorships with both great people behind them, um, and and fantastic to with. And we do, of course, uh, you know, see see a, a return from that. But really, it's a community piece. I think is an important thing for us. Great stuff. Uh, just final question for you, Rap. Who's the best player on this um, this team or this this panel of players outside of yourself? <laughs> Who's the real lead? Don't need to name no names. Is, 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 you're clever. You're clever. You're listening yeah. to Jimmy. Yeah. Kieran Donny, he's is, is the life and soul of this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's really Darren good. O'Sullivan is a little butters. Yeah. Yeah. The two of them. You're just saying all the yeah. right things. You're definitely guaranteed your place next season. <laughs> um, I'll read a few comments before I let you go. Let's. Uh, hi Tim. Great to see David Clifford back and playing so well despite being out for so long. Congrats to Tralee Warriors and for all involved in their magnificent achievement. That comes from Charles Mick from County Meath uh, wants to say huge congratulations to. Kerry on the action at the weekend and although he's not a basketball fan he wants to acknowledge the great win by Garvey's Warriors yesterday. Brennan Kerry versus Mayo again next Sunday. Uh, great following the Warriors over the weekend. Amazing final few minutes yesterday. Incredible. And that comes from Mary uh, called a Rocky. Um, and will, uh, text has come in to us. Uh, will you please send a congrats uh, to all of the Warriors team and to Jimmy and Pop and all the committee and also to Jim Garvey who I played under a... Oh, what? I played under the Garvey group in Tralee and Castleiden, a fantastic man in support and basketball. And that comes from Liam Brosnan, of course, a brilliant basketballer as well, that hit something like 41 points. He keeps telling us every week he's here on Terrace Talk in one big game, but it's many moons ago now, Liam. But thanks for that text. Lad, you've been brilliant. Jim Garvey of Garvey's group, you're brilliant sponsors. I know it. I deal with you in the football and hurling side, Jim. You're brilliant and support a local community. And I think it's well acknowledged and respected here in Kerry as well. Likewise, Rap Bevitas, uh, I can only wish you the very best and look forward. Uh, if Kerry are not playing somewhere, I might get to a Garvey's Warriors game next season. I was up in Hyde Park, Roscommon, but I've seen it all on social media and you're definitely a star for the future. Jimmy, you are the Hall of Fame man and well done yesterday. And I think everybody, out, no, you don't even have to be a basketball follower yeah. to acknowledge what you've done. It's brilliant for Kerry and well done and you can take a bow. Uh, we have plenty more after this break. Thanks. Terrace Talk on Radio Kerry. Brought to you in association with BrianJames.ie. 
UAE, leading the way for stylish menswear in Kerry. Indeed, you're very welcome back here to Terrace Talk and thanks a million to, of course, the all involved in uh, Tr- Garvey's Trilly Warriors and winning the Super League yesterday and thanks for coming into studio tonight. Uh, now we turn our attention, of course, Kerry who were involved in the final round of the league yesterday in Hyde Park against Roscommon and I should have a sports editor with the Kerryman on the line. Good evening, Paul. Paul Brennan. Good evening, Tim. How are you? Hi, not too bad, Paul. Uh, well, Paul, you made it back safe and sound. I was up there yesterday with you. Um, what's your take on, on yesterday's performance by both sides? Uh, yeah, well, look, Tim, I, I suppose there was a certain amount to play for in the game. Um, but, uh, you know, nonetheless, Kerry, Kerry just needed a draw, or a win or a draw. But even had they lost, they, they, they probably would have made the league final next like Sunday anyway. Uh, likewise, at the other end of the table, Roscommon were, were sort of had a, had a slim hope of, of saving off relegation, but it, it was only a slim hope. And again, I think you know needing results to go go their way elsewhere. So you know it had a certain feel of, of inevitability about it. I thought, um, look, Roscommon, you know, were plucky enough in the first half, but they played with a, a fairly stiff breeze. Didn't really, um, you know, make that make that count to their advantage, and uh, went in three points down half time, and and then Kerry really killed the game, which I think was one three unanswered in the in the first ten minutes, second half, and and thereafter it it was fairly comfortable, very comfortable indeed for for Kerry in that, and I think we're scamming, were sort of maybe resigned to their face uh, well before the end of the game. So yeah, so so that's the way it really played out. Uh, not the most intense uh, game of the campaign for for either side. Uh, Paul, there was a big talking point uh, well we won't call it a talking point on the build up to this game uh, the return of David Clifford and he was he got straight into the action after what 20 odd seconds uh, he had a goal effort and uh, it's something that Kerry haven't been creating a lot right throughout the league is goal chances but David Clifford brought another dimension to this Kerry uh, forward line yesterday He did of course Tim absolutely there was a, it was a, a frizz on of like, excitement um you know, from when the team was named Friday night, it wasn't, I think, a great surprise that David was named to start. He, he had met the panel the, the week before in that, and, you know, he was always go, going to get some action, and it was probably, you know, a great game to, to start him in it. And, uh, yeah, just say, like, the big, you know, nearly from the kick, uh, the, the throw-in, sorry, um, you know, he, he, he broke the, the Roscommon cover, and uh, it was a fantastic save by, by Colm Lavin, the Roscommon goalkeeper, to deny him at that stage, and... A little later on, he 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 fizzed one off the, took some paint off the crossbar um, uh, for a point as well, and just really every time you know the ball came towards him, whether he was close to goal, he was turning inside his man, whether he come a little deeper, he was you know finding a man with a with a pass, and look, he he just did what we've sort of come come accustomed to seeing from David, you know. But yeah, just just added that little bit of of of, of, of edge to carry up front, and you know I think Peter Keane alluded to maybe the the lack of goals up to now and, and you know but look they created several and, and uh, Sean O'Shea and, and Stephen O'Brien were on hand yesterday to, to, to get to um, it was quite interesting actually Sean O'Shea for all the all the, the, the football and scoring he's played since he debuted last year uh, that was his first goal actually in the, for a senior goal for Kerry in the Eagle Championship so that was a, another one for the for the statisticians out there but um yeah, it certainly looks exciting to have Clifford back and, and he'll be a huge asset next week in Coe Park. Uh, what was very uh, noticeable in the first half as well, Paul, is the, the kick passing by Kerry that we saw at one stage uh, and Ambrose alluded to it in commentary. Uh, I think it was uh, Tom O'Sullivan sent a, a ball up to the full forward line and it took out four or five uh, Roscommon players and it was, seemed to be the order of the day by Kerry uh, hitting that inside line. It was, um, Timmy, you know, and, and I suppose, you know, we mentioned Clifford there earlier on, and look, when you have a target man like him and, um, you know, Kevin McCarthy, unfortunately, you know, he lasted five minutes, but then you had Tommy Walsh inside as well, so, you know, they're, they're, they're players, they're strong players, they can win their own ball inside, you know, high or low, really, and that, and, you know, I suppose maybe we've seen a little shift in, in, in a few of the games in this league, you know, where... Were um, I suppose Tyrone in particular. Um, if you look at the, the game against the win against Dublin, and that and you know they opted to to go along, and you know it just seems to be a few teams, not all teams, in Walker carried away yet. There's plenty of lateral passing and plenty of you know in possession nine being nine tenths the law and, uh, and all that still. But but certainly I think you know teams like Kerry, Tyrone, we've seen as you know Dublin will always try and move the ball fast through through, through the hands and, and with the boot as well and. 
you know, it's it's probably, you know, <laughs> some years on, and certain managers may be cutting on that, um, you know, this might be the way to, to beat teams that set up, you know, with, with mass defences or, or sweepers or whatnot, is just to use that ball, you know, and uh, get it in quick. And as I say, look, Kerry have, you know, there's some Kerry forward that can't win his own ball inside and, and that. So, um, yeah, we might hopefully see a bit more of that. Probably the mark is helping it and, you know, it'll be interesting, obviously, you know, that when, when the league finishes the mark and that experimental rule will will, will be shelved uh, for the championship yeah. least, whether we see it next year or not, another matter. But So, you know, it will just be interesting come championship time to see, you know, even the likes of Tommy Walsh and that, who, who again was winning a couple of marks yesterday, um, you know, just, just how that will affect the, the approach uh, come summer. Uh, what do you think of uh, the new guys? When I say new guys, they've got games already, but uh, uh, Diamond O'Connor yesterday tried out again at midfield with, with Jack Barry. Yeah, it was, it was a, an interesting one. You know, club mates for Nigel there. It was, it was a nice feather in the cap for the Tralee club there to have, have, have the 8 and 9 on the field that yesterday. But, um, yeah, I thought Jeremy, you know, worked hard. I, uh, to be honest, I wasn't overly impressed. Or, you know, I, I didn't think he he, 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 you know, blew it out of the water. To say, you know, but, but he, look, he worked hard. We know what we get from him. He's an honest lad. He, he worked hard. He's, you know, whether he's nearly ready for midfield yet is is is, is a hard one. And certainly, like uh, on the wing, as the wing forward, you know, he's great mobility and he can move the ball. To be fair, like Wiscommon have a decent old midfield there. Um, Ty Roke and Shane, Shane Lauren, yeah. like they're, they're they're big strong lads and they're 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 a good partnership there. And probably Kerry Profit was just uh, you know in that final few minutes. Um, I think it was a work was it that uh, got Sinbin black cards and Sinbin there just for half time and and. and Kerry just managed to pull away a little bit there, but look, Jeremy, Jeremy did fine, you know, without a doubt. You know, it was it was interesting that Mark Griffin was was, was left off the starting team, having got a start the last couple of games. Look, I think a lot of people, and I agree with a lot of the commentary, is that I won't say the midfield is a huge worry or a concern, but I think they just need. Obviously, Dave Moore is missing, and as Peter Keane said this, you just expect them back to the league final next week, so it'll be championship again, obviously, before we see Davis. Um, out there but um, yeah it's just an area they'll have to kind of settle try and settle on a, on, on, on a partnership it could well default back to Jack Barry and David Moore come championship but um, look they're certainly trying to sell out Mark Griffin has got a run and Graham um, O'Sullivan yeah. yesterday um, yeah. you know so look the young lads have done fine to a man you know Dara Moynan uh, came in with his two points yesterday in that and um, yeah, no, they're, no well, they're settling, they're settling into se- senior level. Uh, a quick word, you were probably disappointed overall, were you, by Roscommon? There seemed to be a lack of bite by them, wasn't there? Ah, look, there was. I mean, I suppose at the start of the league, you know, you always look at the two teams that, that have come up from Division 2, um, and uh, it was Cavan and Roscommon again. They're, they're you know, on a bit of a yo-yo with those two counties in the last couple of years. Roscommon had come up few years back, they, they did well to hold their own for for a year. Then they went, went down. They won, won relegation or won promotion uh, straight up again. And, and Cavan have been kind of up and down as well. And look, you're going to have certain counties that, that are going to just, you know, maybe not be quite good enough for one division and maybe a little bit too strong for another division and they'll be up and down on that. But yeah, look, I suppose Kerry or Roscommon would have, you know, they had a bit of turmoil and they lost Kevin next day as manager at the end of last year. They took quite a while to, to, to get a man in. Anthony Cunningham sort of came in nearly at the eleventh hour when when um, was it a Rourke? I think in Rourke fell through. But yeah, look, it's it's disappointing always to go down. Um, you know, Cork and Tip have gone out of Division Two, down to Division Three. That's, that's you know that's disappointing for those as well. But look, Roscommon will always, I suppose, look to to you know shake it up in the Connacht Championship and. Um, you know, a kind of right. title would be would be a big thing for them, and, and back to the Super Eights again. You know, if they get in the Super Eights, I think it would be considered a, be a huge a good bonus year overall. Um, can I ask you uh, about next Sunday? Uh, Kerry take on, I suppose, their great rivals over the last number of years. Mayo, uh, four pm throwing in Croke Park. Um, we seen a couple of weeks ago, uh, as you mentioned it yesterday, it might have been a bit of a wobble by Kerry when we lost our home game here, in Austin Stack Park, to Mayo. Things will be different this time, won't they? They will, Tim. You know, it's, it's just, you know, it's interesting and fascinating, I suppose, that, you know, that the one game Kerry have lost is to Mayo, and it was only two weeks ago. So, uh, you know, they're, they're back in Crow Park now. We'd hope, certainly, that the conditions weather-wise would be considerably better than they were that night in Tralee. I mean, you know, the wind and the rain just mitigate for, for you know, for both sides for, 
for poor poor handling and, and errors and all the rest of it. So that's the first thing. You, do, you just hope that, that the weather is kind to both teams. Um, yeah, look, somebody was asking me, like, will, will Mayo kind of, you know, fear was scum and that? And, and the answer is no, not at all. They happen to fear, uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> Kerry, I should say. You know, Mayo won fair, uh, fear Kerry one bit at all. I mean, the last time they meet the championship, they obviously they beat in that replay in the semi semifinals. So, and look, both teams, I suppose what's interesting now is both teams, you know, are getting up to full speed in terms of fitness, in terms of conditioning, in terms of, you know, personnel. Um, whether we see some of the Crokes lads next week remains to be seen. Peter King expects that Paul Ganey should be pretty close to, to the panel, if not the starting team. Clifford obviously is back. So, yeah, both teams look. Both teams will, will be getting a lot more uh, fellas on field and, and getting, you know, this is it before the championship, Tim. You know, I mean, we're not going to see them beyond next Sunday, we're not going to see these teams again until yeah. the championship in May or, or in Kerry's case, June, late June. So, um, yeah, it's, it's... And it would it's be nice to, to get a psychological advantage, wouldn't it, Paul, uh, for either well, side because there's a possibility they'll meet again? It would, of course, absolutely. But I, I think what would be more important at this stage is, look, you know, Peter is great to kind of play down the, these these league games so far, but at the end of the day, they're in a National League final now. It's there to be won. There's a silver silverware to be brought home. You know, and... and you know, a lot of these fellas haven't, you know, haven't much won at senior level. Um, you know, obviously some of them have a National League title there from medal from two years ago. But, you know, all those young lads we mentioned and Deshaun O'Shea and David Clifford, you know, they, they want to start winning things at senior levels. And this is the first opportunity now they'll have to get their hands on silverware and, and, a, and a medal. So, um, and look, the last time, you know, this, this Kerry lads were in Crow Park, it didn't end well. That, that was a Super 8 game against Galway last, last year. So, um, Be chance to put you know, all right. those things, you know, I just want yeah. to, as I say, blow, blow out a bit of dirty diesel from, from last year and, and just continue on, just, just you know, bring bring a bring a win into the into the, the next two months of, of kind of uh, off, off, off season, if you like, yeah. and, and, and head into championship uh, as National League champions. That's what both teams will want. Oh, great stuff. Uh, Paul, thanks a million for coming on Terrace Talk this evening. Uh, well, I'm sure we'll meet you uh, during the weekend uh, in Crow Park. Thank you. Thank you. Why not? Of course, that's Paul Brennan, a sports editor with the Kerryman. Uh, those comments coming through to us, uh, Joey O'Hanlon via Twitter. Uh, Terrace Talk, uh, asking Terrace Talk, who's going to uh, be on the bench for Clifford come the championship? Of course, David Clifford, uh, I take it, he'll nail down a place. Uh, well, that's definitely a question for our listeners as well. Um, who do you think uh, will go to the bench um, for making way for David Clifford? Because he's such a serious player, I'm sure that uh, he's a huge threat to everybody in that forward line. Uh, congratulations to all involved with Trelly Warriors basketball team on their wonderful achievement in winning the Super League title over the weekend. That comes from Father Pat Green Lynch. Mike in Fire East tonight uh, would like to say he thinks Kerry have the best forwards in Ireland and after being in Roscommon yesterday and seeing David Clifford on the pitch was a great pleasure. Mike also thinks uh, if we could start out our midfield then we would be the best team in the country. Plenty of more after this break. Terrace Talk on Radio Kerry brought to you in association with BrianJames.ie Leading the way for stylish menswear in Kerry. Indeed, you're very welcome back here to Terrace Talk. Of course, coming up in the second hour, uh, we'll be speaking to uh, West Kerry man Shane Finn, running and cycling across the USA in 36 days. Also, we'll hear from uh, Kerry's only professional boxers, uh, Kevin Cronin, of course, the mid Kerry man, uh, will fight uh, on his professional debut on Saturday night. And likewise, Kill Cummins, Siobhan O'Leary, having her second pro fight. And we'll also hear from underage, talented players here in Kerry who are doing well at national level. Those comments coming through to us. Hi, Tim, congratulations to all successful Kerry teams over the weekend and good luck to our footballers in Park and Croakig. Uh, the Kerry Camogie team uh, welcomed highly fancied Galway uh, to John Mitchell's yesterday. This was Galway's team with some big names. Kerry were reduced to 14 players before half time and the visitors held a comfortable lead. However, despite the numerical disadvantage, Kerry put in a storm in second half performance outside, uh, outscoring the visitors and held on for victory. The spirit of this young team bodes well for the future. On Saturday, the Kerry minor Camogie team uh, booked their place in the All-Ireland semi-final. Our under-16 Camogie team faced Waterford on Sunday in the Munster final so the future looks bright. And that comes from Restart Oferon, of course the Kerry Camogie PRO. And now we switch our attention to handball and I should have on the line one of Kerry's most decorated handballers that is Dominic Lynch. Good evening Dominic. Tim, good evening, how are you keeping? How are they all back around Glenbay? Great, great. We can't complain at all now with a great weekend and I suppose that's the most important thing. 
Well, I tell you, uh, they'll put up a statue some time. Or is it up already for you, Dominic? Uh, you won your 31st All-Ireland at the weekend. Yeah, should Tim look tonight, I suppose. I, I'm, I'm having a good old career and I'm still going. And I'm at the, I won my 31st All-Ireland, which is um, which is a major old thing for me. And it keeps me going and it keeps me interested in the sport. And I suppose that's the most important thing, just to keep us going and keep me fit. And that's what it's all about. Like, but this is this is huge in the sense that uh, not too many people have fifty monster titles. Five zero. Um, you have you fifty now, haven't you? Yeah, fifty. I fifty eight. Tim, to tell the truth, I won my fifty eight one there the, um, last Wednesday week with Andrew Crook and the doubles. So I've um, I fifty eight now. And uh, look, I, I I'm trying to go after. I think the record of all Kerry of anyone in Kerry is sixty seven. So that I, I, that's what that's what my goal is trying to set that and try to beat that. But um, look, even every time I win in All Ireland, they're a monster to the massive thing for us because it's just great to be involved in any kind of sport. And I suppose the weekend, like we we went to we went up to Kings Court, which um, there was myself playing the master racing with Derek Keane from Belly Mac and then we had two juveniles from our own club playing during the 16th and like it was 26 years ago since it was last one in Glimby uh, and under 16 All-Ireland which was my seven Janja which is a long time and the boys went up and they won it like and they were the underdogs and they came over with a win and it was massive for the two young fellas for Dara, for Dara Lynch and Sean, Sean Kirk so it was brilliant for them Dominic did you ever think when you started playing handball that you'd arrive I won't say it's your destination because you want to, to get more titles but you'd go on a journey like this having 58 monster titles what, what drives you Dominic? I don't know. Look, I thought Tim, at the end of the day, my goal was always to get to Crow Park. Like, and I said, if I ever got to Crow Park, that would do me. Like, when I was a young fella, and to win one All Ireland, and sure, like you win one, and the next thing I was in the next year, and the next year, and I always kept winning. And look, I thought, look to the time you, it's like any sport, the time you put into something, you you will get something out of it. Like, and if, if you're dedicated enough to it, and like to drive the way the, the drive I have is. It's to win titles, like, and enjoy myself and play well. Like, even the weekend, no, I won, I didn't play well. And I, I won't lie to Tim, I was disappointed after the game because I even said Jack was with me and I said, Jack, geez, I didn't play well. And I, I was disappointed over it because I didn't play well. I still won my All Ireland, but I was disappointed because I didn't play well. I always like to play in a good performance and play well. That's my main thing. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Dominic, I, it comes across, are you very hard on yourself? You say, you, um, you, are you very hard on yourself? Oh, I suppose I would, Tim. Like, 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 I, I, I would because, like, even at training now, if I didn't, tra- if I didn't play well at times, I'd be kind of disappointed over it on the way home on the journey. And you know, like, I, I always want to do well every time. Like, even for a training game, to me, like competition, I, like, I always say to the young lads here that we have training. Like, I'd say you're going in for an hour and twenty minutes, an hour and a half to train. You train, but you can do your messing after it or whatever before it's a talk. And you go in and train hard for that hour and a half. And I always like to put in good performance or training, and that's the main thing to me. Do you know what I mean? Do you measure? So you measure yourself. You say you're you're training wherever, and you're driving home in the car. So do you play the training session back in your mind? Oh, I would. Like I was in, I want, I was in Kappa now on Tuesday night. I was playing the fellow that was in the intermediate final the weekend in from Clare. I played him in Kappa. And even on the way home, I rang Jack and said, Geez, Jack, I'm disappointed. I played poor. I beat him, but I knew in my head I, w- I was better than what I was on the night. And I said, Jack, geez, I was disappointed because I didn't play well tonight. And you know, with the All-Ireland coming up on Saturday, I wanted to put in a good performance this week training. So then I played again Thursday night. And even after training Thursday night, I said, oh, geez, I'm back to form. I'm delighted again. And I was happy. But then Saturday, I wasn't happy because I didn't play well. But I still won my All-Ireland, I suppose. Maybe I'm too hard to myself for that over that. Do you know what I mean? And you said you, you said an amazing thing, no different to uh, uh, the great Sean Kelly and Stephen Roach in, in cycling, that they wanted to win. Uh, Tony McCoy, uh, of course, uh, that great jockey at national hunt level. They were always challenged themselves and were hard on themselves. And you said they are, is winning your mentality? What is like winning and putting in a good performance? Like I look, even that I won the weekend. I won, like I, I got involved with the two juveniles that we had in the All Ireland under sixteen. Myself and Jack got involved with them in maybe around Christmas time or before it. And uh, like to see the two boys winning the weekend, it meant more to me than I winning my own All Ireland. I think because we were at one time into them, and they were at they've given in a performance all year. Like anything we asked them, they've done it all year. We asked them to go to training, they'd be there. They put in the performance, and for the boys to win the weekend, I got more enjoyment. I won't lie, even did I win in my own All Ireland. I got more enjoyment out of the boys beating Tyrone on the weekend because it was massive for the two young fellas. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's a measure of the person you are. Uh, the comments coming in to us. Uh, well done to Dominic Lynch of Glenbay, who won the Masters uh, All Ireland handball title yesterday. He's 31st All Ireland medal. Also, well done to Dara Lynch and Sean Quirk, who you just spoke about, who won the under 16 doubles uh, yesterday. And all the best to the boys. And that comes from all uh, in uh, Glenbay. Uh, a lot of people recognise your feet, but on a daily basis, then, do you live and breathe this sport? 
Oh, I would, I suppose. Like, just like, um, like as I said, I'm 30 something years playing it, and I, I would like every day, like, is nothing but handball, like, or going to training or going for a run or doing something. Like, I, like, I'd, I'd be talking about handball nearly every day of the week. Like, there'd never be a day going. I wouldn't be talking to somebody on the phone about handball or something. Like, I would live and breathe, I suppose, really. But sure, look, as I said, it keeps me going, it keeps me fit, and that's what it's all about. And I just hope to get another few more years out and win another few more titles. That's what I'm after. Am I allowed to ask you what age you know, Dominic? Yeah, I said I, I'm 42 with him, so I'm oh, sure, I'm, I'm, I'm like getting younger. You're only youngsters, to see. And but it's <laughs> but, very important to to mind yourself, mind one's body when you you take on uh, a such targets to take on. I take it that you you lead a very disciplined life, be it diet and training. Well, I would, well, uh, look to tell you too much. I never had a diet in my life. I no, I, w- I wouldn't eat. I, I'd look after myself, but I never had a diet in my life. But I don't drink. I don't smoke. But uh, like the way I look at it, it's just what you put into training. Like if if you train hard enough, like you you can like everyone say you have a diet, you have a diet, but I don't because you eat what you want, you train hard, and look you are staying shaped in by training. And like it's all down to training. That's what I find. But look, a lot of teams do have diets you now. But I I'm taught to hear playing the game. And I never had a diet as long as as long as I'm playing the game. I suppose maybe I should, maybe I might have done a bit better if I did. But um, I'm happy with what I've done so far. Do you know what I mean? Dominic, what's coming up next for you? Um, well, I'm playing the first round of the senior championship this weekend now with Jack and Kappa in Limerick on Saturday against Galway. And my son, John Joe Kirk, then have the All Ireland semi final of the Masters at home against Dublin in Glimby on the 13th of April. So I hope, look, we, look, we have another chance of winning the All Ireland. Look, and I thought if we can do it, my son, John Joe will be going for a two in a row. And even yesterday, I was my three in a row master. So that was a big thing for me to get three in a row. Do you know what I mean? And. Um, I hope to win the doubles now with Janjan and just keep it going. Because, look, when you do get a win, look, you'll get, you know what I mean, like, it gives you a boost, you know, it gets you out for training again quicker and everything straight away after it, like. And finally, how many, um, how many nights a week do you train, uh, Dominic? Ah, uh, jeez, I suppose, Tim, like, I'm definitely, I'm definitely gone five nights, if not six nights, do you know what I mean? There's, there's, there's wow. something nearly every night. We do something, like, well, definitely five nights a week and, uh, like Jack and Taylor and you on the bike we, we, we were more likely gone six nights like wow you're definitely a massive commitment Dominic I want to thank you for coming on uh, Terrace Talk this evening and a massive achievement and we've no doubt that you'll reach the targets and uh, well I can tell you I know Glyn Bay is proud of you but I can tell the rest of Kerry is proud of you as well a massive achievement and winning 58 yeah. titles well done Thanks, Tim. Thanks very much, and thanks, Radio Kerry. For it. Thanks very much. You're very welcome. Because that's thanks the again. great uh, Dominic Lynch, the most one of the most decorated handballers here in Kerry. Uh, we've plenty uh, more stories coming up in the second hour of the program. Uh, we'll be speaking uh, to Shane Finn, running and cycling across the USA in 36 days. That's all to come after this break. Terrace Talk on Radio Kerry with Tim Moynihan, Mondays from six to eight pm. Indeed, you're very welcome back to our second hour of Terrace Talk. Now we change disciplines. Uh, a West Kerry man will begin a 36-day trek across the USA this coming Friday. Shane Finn, well known for his 12 and 24 marathon events, begins in San Francisco later this week, hoping to reach Brooklyn Bridge in New York in early May. Eamon Hickson caught up with Shane earlier and he asked Shane to describe this task. We broke it down into a 36-day um I suppose, event or, or, or challenge really uh, aiming. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to cycle 270 kilometres a day for three days. Um, so 270k a day every day for three days and then I'm going to run 60k a day. So probably from Dingle to Clarity, roughly, um, every day for three days. So uh, that's six days and I just repeat that six times and that gives us 36 days to the, from the Golden Gate Bridge to the Brooklyn Bridge. And I know while you've been thinking about this for, I suppose, nearly two years now, is it? What, what has the yeah. the physical and mental preparation been like? The training and even also, I suppose, getting yourself into the mindset? Yeah, I suppose, to be honest, the, 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 the mental preparation really, for me, has, has all really, I suppose, come down to the last month, really. I've been very, I'm a very visual person, so, you know, I've been to... I, I was here last year to, um, you know, do some planning and to see the place and stuff like that and obviously I'm actually I'm, I'm quite familiar with New York as well so you know I have a visual representation of the start and the finish and I'm not, I don't have much idea what's going on in the middle of the country but um, I'll have to wait and see but I suppose you know just being on my own here the last month really has been has been kind of perfect really you know just um, getting myself right getting the body right and just, just training every morning and stuff like that so that's been that's been really good um, and then I suppose second of all then as well um, 
physically, to be honest, there's there's no training plan for this kind of stuff. Mm. Um, you know, my, my kind of approach really, the, my, my biggest priority with a lot of these things is um, you you have to be you have to be injury free um, going in, and if you're not, you're, you're in trouble. And and uh, you know, thank God I'm, I'm injury free. I'm probably in the best shape I've ever been in. So um, I think I, I've ticked all the boxes I need to tick really going in. And um, you know, you, you get to stage then, obviously within the event and things like that, and where it's just uh, you know you're you're managing everything as best mm-hmm. you can. Um, so look, there's, there's obviously a lot of things I know, but there's also a lot of unknowns too. That um, I suppose in a weird kind of a way they'd kind of excite me as well. <laughs> Uh, Shane, I suppose uh, over the past few years here, a lot of people in Kerry know that you did 12 Martins in 12 days, then did 24 Martins in 24 days. And uh, I suppose chatting to you after those, you, you, I suppose your recovery was one thing. And what lessons did you learn yeah. from those 12 and 24 Martins that you can use in terms yeah. of recovery in this? Yeah, I think I think the, the main things I learned really was, was not, not to panic in the first week. Um, so what I mean by that is, I mean, you know, it, 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 it takes somewhere between seven to ten days for your body to actually adapt to what you're doing. Um, so, I mean, it was it was coming towards the end of the 24 marathons where I started to run faster. Um, I ran my fastest marathon in day 19, and, and a similar thing happened back during the 12 marathons. So, you know, I think, it, you know, we hit the Sierra Nevada mountain range on day two. Um, and obviously that could be quite tough, and, and uh, you know, I'm expecting it and things like that, but... You know, I could be coming up to day 15, 16 before I actually settle in and then actually figure out, my body figures out what, what I'm trying to do. And, you know, you're, you're, I wake up in the morning, my body knows that I'm about to run an ultramarathon or I'm about to cycle from uh, from, from Dingle to, uh, to Prairie Town, you know. But, um, I mean, you just, you just you be patient um, and do the small things right. And then, you know, I, I think I'll, uh, I'll worry about the recovery from, uh, from May 3rd, I guess, from May 3rd or 4th onwards. You mentioned that some parts of the country are not 100% sure of you know what conditions you'll face, but have you researched what kind of terrain you'll be running, I would say, going across the Midwest and things like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'd be, um, you know, in my, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of my preparations and stuff, Eamon, I'd be, I'd be fairly methodical, you know. I'd, I'd go through everything, really, with a, with a fine tooth comb. I mean, I've, uh, in the house here, I, I think my, I, I've taken apart my bike probably six or seven times now at this stage and put it back together again. And I mean, um, I actually Googled Street Viewed probably 80% of the route already myself. Um, I just sat down one night and did it, you know, and just to get, a, again, a visual representation. Um, you know, yeah, I, I have the elevations written down every day and what I'm going to be climbing. And, you know, there, what, there's a day there going across the Rockies where there's 11,000 feet of climbing on the bike and things like that, you know. But, I mean, it's just, uh, that's just a, a step in the stone, I guess, really, to get me to, get me to Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I'll respect the distances and then when they come, I'll, I'll, I'll take them on step by step. And, um, yeah, it'll be, I think, you know, I think I have earmarks day 16 to 20. It'll probably be the most challenging. Hmm. Uh, and there's actually day 22. is actually downhill, would you believe? Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, so, we, yeah, we'll, look, we'll, we'll take it from there. But uh, there's a couple of fairly isolated places now. They'd be, I know we have a few isolated places back around West Kerry as well, but they're not as isolated as some of the places that we're about to go. But we'll, um, look, we'll, we'll, take it, we'll take it on the chin and we'll, uh, we'll, um, we'll just take every day as we can, hopefully. And what kind of temperatures are you expecting? It'll be very varied, actually, and uh, very varied. You know, even here, like when I was in, I was doing a bit of training in Colorado before I got here. And um, you know, you go on the bike and you come back, and your water bottles are frozen. You know, but um, mm. that was that was the bones of a month ago. Now again, so I'd hope it'll have thawed out a small bit, hopefully. But um, you know, here here in San Francisco, now it can be it can be you know the days are quite warm, and then by night it can get quite chilly. Like so, um, it, it varies really. Yeah, you know, I mean, low, high teens, low twenties. Um, I mean, we're heading to we're, we're into Nevada from the evening of day two onwards. It could be up into mm. the thirties, and you know, then we get into the Rockies. It could be uh, we could have the North Face jackets on us, and we could be uh, have woolly hats and gloves. You know, so it, it's it's um, you know, I, I suppose I've, I've thought about it quite a lot, but I think it, it's literally going to be a case of what I do at home is I wake up in the morning, and look out the window, and I call it from there. You know, yeah. Um, because I think that's kind of the best option to take with it, really. Because you know, I think I can control things like my recovery and my, um, you know, how my pace and my heart rate and stuff like that. But I can't control the weather, so you know, I kind of, I kind of put it to the back of my mind, really, and I'll just take take whatever whatever comes at me each day and uh, make the best of it or the worst of it. You know. So Shane, you want to run sixty kilometers per day or cycle two hundred and seventy? How many hours of travelling per day are you expecting? 
Yeah, it, it, again, a lot of this will come down to, uh, I suppose, you know, the, the elevation on the bike. I mean, the um, you know the day I'm doing the eleven thousand feet of climbing on the bike, it could be a little bit slower, you know. But um, I think you know I could be up on the bike for anywhere to ten hours a day, um, maybe more, maybe less. Um, and then you know, running, I could be up, I could be running for five and a half, six hours, maybe mm-hmm. even six and a half hours a day. Again, kind of depending on the elevation, you know. But um, obviously, you know, I, I train very closely to, to heart rate, so I think my my heart rate would really dictate a lot of my uh, my paces mm-hmm. and stuff like that, you know. And uh, that usually levels out and it, it picks a little sweet spot, I suppose, after uh, usually after about seven to eight, seven to eight days as well. In terms of energy needs, you know, sixty uh, sorry, thirty six days crossing the United States. As, have you worked out how much you must eat every day in terms of calories and what foods are the right right foods to be consuming? Yeah, yeah, no, I have. I did a lot of uh, I did a lot of work on that. Now, um, I suppose in preparation for this, I suppose you know it's another step up again from the twenty four marathon. So I suppose I had to step up other aspects of what I was doing and things as well. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I did some uh, kind of testing with uh, with Health Matters there in Dublin, and um, yeah, I'll be I'll be going through somewhere between seven and a half and eight thousand calories a day, um, which is you know, which mm. is a lot of food. I'm not a, and I'm not a, I'm not a. I'm not I'm not six foot six or anything like that. I'm a fairly uh, compact sized lad, but I you know I I I can put away quite a bunch of food as well, mm. uh, and I'll have to because it's um you know just for for recovery purposes and my immune system and things like that, and um, they're all really really important you know and just getting enough calories and fat and protein in that I can recover, um you know so it's mm. it's, it's it's been it's been an education in itself really that um. You know, you learn what works for you, and I suppose the other thing to note is, you know, not everything what works for me will work for somebody else. I mean, another lad could do this next week, and he could have a completely different nutrition plan. So yeah, I think I just had to, you know, take my time and, and find out what actually works the best for me. You know, I'm, I'm, you know the guys in, in Origin there in Farn 4 actually created me a specific bar. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the yeah, my nutritionist, Barry Murray, sent them on, this is what he needs. The lads went into the, to, to their lab and, and just created a created a product for me. So um, you know, I'm very lucky to have have things like that as well, and have have uh, people like that in my in my corner too. It's uh, it's very it's reassuring as well, you know. Uh, you're kind of half touching on there, I suppose. There's a huge support crew, not just with you in in the United States, but I suppose an extended support crew all around. Uh, you know, it's it, it's it's massive, really. I mean, I, look, I suppose people would from the outside would look in and they'd see me doing, they'd see me running or you know, attempting to cross America, running around Ireland. It's it, yeah, I might be the person on the road, but I mean, there's there's actually going to be eight of us on the road in Ireland, and you know, you might even see those people mm. behind the behind the scenes, you know. So I, I never I never say um, you know anytime I speak or anytime I do, it's, it's always we. I use the word we because I a lot of times without these people that are support me, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing from from family to to friends at home mm. to neighbours to volunteers from the charity, just to contacts I've made over the last kind of two or three years. You know, what I mean, even the Irish community here in America since I arrived has just been uh, it's blown my mind. Really, mm. to be honest, from you know, from a tiny little village about a two hours south of Denver, same with a man near named Ivan O'Gorman from Limerick. And, you know, just they just took me in like and and, and just made me one of their own. You know, and the same has happened here since uh, our own neighbour here, Brian Sheehy. Um, from from Honest Gall there like has been uh, I think the amount of stuff he's done for me since I got here has, has uh, I'll be in debt to him for, for, for years, you know. So it's just um the support we're getting, you know, from from we we all have the the same common goal. I mean the common goal that we have is, is to raise a quarter of a million euro for a spine of bifida and hydrocephalus Ireland. That's that's the goal really and to get to get us all to New York um safely. And that's that's one of that's obviously our, our our two big um, objectives, and uh, you know have have a bit of a have a bit of an adventure along the way as well. Yeah, and a lot of people I know you've kind of touched on. A lot of people will be asking, why in God's name is Shane Finn running from one side of America to the other? But yeah, yeah, the, the motivation yeah. is to raise money for a, a cause that's uh, very close to your heart and close to your family, I believe. Yes, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, like you know, it's it's um, yeah. I mean, I suppose like I always say, I suppose I'd have a different mindset on, on on things like this for people. Like people would say, God, you know, why why would you do something like that? And I'm like, this is now like literally, I, I've been thinking and I can't wait to do this for the last the last two and a half years. But it's um, yeah, you know, I do a lot of these things to try to try my best to raise to raise as much funds and awareness as I can for for SPHI, which stands for Spina Bifida Hydrocephalus Ireland. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a, yeah it's a condition that that affects my family directly. My my first cousin Mary she she lives with the condition and uh, you know people say God Shane what you're doing is is tough and hard and you know you must be training hard and I can I can I can I can promise you one thing she she's far tougher than I'd ever be like the things that that 
girl has gone through um, in her life to get to where she is um, is far more than anything I'll have to go through to get to uh, from San Francisco to New York. So, you know, I, I suppose when I was 17, I ran my first marathon for the charity and um, I suppose I kind of lost the run of myself then, really. Like, it's uh, it just <laughs> yeah. took off. I, I, uh, you know, I kind of put every other sport I was playing to the side, really, after that. And um, it just, you know, it just, I suppose it gave me a sense of purpose and it gave me a... Uh, it gave me uh, an angle of where I could, you know, challenge myself, but I could also improve the lives of um, of other people, um, all around Ireland, you know. So it's been a it's been a it's been a great journey, and like we're doing, um, you know, we're we're bringing hope to people that might not have much mm-hmm. things to be hopeful about, um, and give them a reason to be involved and give them a reason to be happy. I suppose you know, and that, that's I suppose at the end of the day, that's that's probably worth more than any money that we'll ever raise, you know. So it's um. So it's all important, you know, and uh, I suppose as well, I really enjoy it and, and the crew love it and, and we're all uh, we're all on the same hymn sheet, so it's uh, it's all good. Indeed, Jed. And uh, before I let you go, how can listeners follow you? Yeah, yeah, I suppose they, they can follow. The, it's like I said, I think the phone coverage could be touch and go in a couple yeah. of places in the middle of the country, but um, the, the main the main one really, I suppose, would be the website. Um, so that's at shanefin.com and we, we, we just literally transferred the website. It's all the... There's nothing else on it, only American Ultra stuff now. So, um, and I suppose as well on the uh, on the social media channels there as well. I'm I'm kind of I'm Shane Finn on everything really mm. uh, for for Facebook page, um, Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn. That's where they're they're the four channels I'll be using um, as we're as we're making our way across through the time zones and to the to the other side of the country. Yeah, absolutely great stuff and many thanks there to Eamon Hickson and of course the very best of luck there uh, to Shane Finn running and cycling across the USA in 36 days. Uh, tweet uh, we actually saw today, we said it should get a mention, uh, covering Division 5 football in Kerry can be difficult at times but reading about Barry Longford and Cremont sharing 5.14 apiece, my van coming from 10 points down after 53 minutes and win and B teams from Strand Road and Milltown Castlemaine finishing 4.15 to 2.15 has its upsides and that uh, was a Jason O'Connor tweet earlier today uh, coming up after this break we'll be speaking boxing Terrace Talk on Radio Kerry brought to you in association with BrianJames.ie leading the way for stylish menswear in Kerry you're very welcome back here to Terrace Talk and now we speak to uh, two Kerry's only professional boxers and I should have uh, both Kevin Cronin and Siobhan O'Leary on the line. Good evening folks. Hi, how are you doing Eamon? You're both, actually it's Tim here. Uh, Tim, Tim Moynihan, how are you Siobhan? You're both very good. welcome to Terrace Talk. Uh, first of all to you Siobhan, uh, you've been down this journey already, this is going to be your second pro fight. Is indeed, is indeed. Yeah, I had my first one in November last year, so um, looking forward to getting in there again now. So can't wait, really, can't wait. Uh, Siobhan, I, I, you're of course you're from Kilcommon. Uh, indeed, Kerry would. Kil- <laughs> uh, Kerry, uh, I suppose Kerry wouldn't be renowned for having, uh, especially on the the ladies' boxing side, but to make it a professional level, what, um, where did that, that all come from? I, I, I started boxing in uh, in 2012. Like I, I got into through uh, a white collar event uh, charity thing, so I got a, I did that with a, with my amateur club, and then I I joined the amateur club then, and I competed in amateur boxing for about six years. I took two years off in the middle and came back to amateur boxing then in 2017. had a, had a very good year, and and look, an opportunity came up the end of the end of or the middle of 2018. So and and I, and I, and I took it, you know, so. I mean, I, I'm, I'm def- it's, it's, it's definitely something I fell into. I wouldn't say I, 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 was, I was big into boxing growing up or anything like that, but it's, it's definitely a sport I've, I've fallen in love with. And, and I, you know, it's, it's given me so many things as well. Like, you know, it, it teaches you a lot, boxing teaches you a lot about yourself and, 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 and discipline and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, look, I'm, I'm enjoying the, the, the pro journey and I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm loving it really, to be honest. Great stuff. Um, hi, Kevin. I, of course, I have Kevin Cronin as well. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, uh, how, well, you were on here one night going back a, a lot, quite a long time ago now uh, on Terrace Talk when you decided to go professional. Uh, well, your night is almost here, Ceci. Uh What's the feeling like at the moment? Uh, it's a good buzz around the place now. It's, um, I, I suppose, kind of excitement and nervous at the same time, but uh, I can't wait to get in there, really. Just one week, make wait now, Friday, and then... Uh, yeah, get in there Saturday evening. Can't wait to do it, Kevin. Um, I've, I've seen you. you are trained quite a lot, and you've lost a few kgs on your your way to to get to fight in the division you're fighting. 
Yeah, a nice drop. Um, started off in the amateurs at super heavyweight. Uh, we're heading into light heavyweight now, so it's uh, yeah, twenty five kg drop so far. <laughs> and that obviously that entailed a lot of training as well. What has training been like? Uh, training's been fairly severe, but um, yeah, I guess you just kind of get used to the hard training uh, to start. I guess my first cut I was kind of losing a lot of power and all that it was my the first time I went to light heavy was at the end of the amateurs but this time round I have more experience cutting down to light heavy so yeah I'm feeling plenty of energy now and can't wait to do it uh, Siobhan uh, from mm-hmm. amateur to professional I take it there's a huge difference as well what uh, what do you need to have to do to be professional uh, look I, I think a, a big heart a big heart you need a big heart it's, it's definitely you know, pro boxing is, 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 is very different to amateur boxing. It really is. It's very different. There's a lot of um, lot of emphasis on power and, 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 and things like that. But I suppose for me, I mean, the, what, the main thing you need to, to get into any boxing ring, amateur or pro, is, is a big heart and dedication. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I, I, I think if you have that, you're, you're, you're starting off on a, on a good foot. Do you know what I mean? Have a, have a, a good team around you and a, and a good trainer, which I do. Do you know, so... I, I take it. I, I, who's your coach, by the way? Um, My so coach is Eddie Highland. I'm boxing out of um, Highland Boxing Academy, which is based in SPG Tala. So I travel up to Dublin twice a week to train with Eddie. And you know what? As, as myself and Eddie are getting to know each other, and 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 as I'm settling down uh, in, into the pro game. You know, it's my, my my boxing is coming along, and and I'm 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 getting better, and. You know, myself and Eddie have really gelled and, you know, I think my style of boxing really suits his style of coaching. So it's, it's, it's going from, from, it's just getting better and better, to be honest. You know, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, great stuff. Kevin, what do you know about your opponent uh, this coming Saturday night? My opponent this Saturday night? Um, very little. <laughs> to be honest, I just know he's orthodox and, look, that's really all I know. He's going to have a good guard. He's going to be a good come-forward boxer. So it's really a strong, strong light heavyweight. Um, he's a... Uh, flying over from Poland so yeah that's about all I know really so I just got to get in there and do my thing And what is your emphasis uh, being on training is it a case of uh, you let him think about you rather than knowing too much about him it's, it must be very difficult because a lot of these boxers at professional level uh, people would have seen them seen them box beat on uh, a recording or video or whatever uh, you don't have that luxury No yeah well I guess going into my first pro fight there's going to be a lot of pressure as it is so I think now if I went looking into who I'm fighting, it's going to add that bit more pressure. So, look, I'm going to try and... Uh, I'm going to just... I'm going to not going to put that pressure on my shoulders, really. I'm just going to go in there and do what I do best. How many set rounds uh, is this in your le- at your level, um, Kevin? Yeah, I'm setting off with a four-rounder now, Saturday. Four-rounder. So, and uh, it's a yeah. ca- is, it, is it a case looking for a big knockout in the first round? Or uh, will, you, <laughs> no. will, you, will you test, will you test uh, what the opposition is like early on? Oh, well, look, I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna try not to let the excitement get to me, really. It'd be my first pro fight. Look, I've been training for four rounds. I've been training for a tough four rounds, so that's what I'm going in facing is a tough four rounds. And look, if the opportunity comes to take them out of there, I'm going to take it. Uh, Kevin, when you start, uh, you mentioned they're training for four rounds. That's probably a lot of a lot of stamina is needed for that because uh, you wouldn't have done that at amateur level. No, three rounds at amateur. Yeah, it's a different step up. It's a, it's a different sport, really. As Siobhan was saying, there's a lot more power involved in amateurs. There was a lot of point scoring. And I guess in pros, you could say, you're really trying to get in there and hurt each other. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's, gonna, it's a different style and it's a different type of stamina really to the amateurs. So it's all new to me, yeah. Yeah, definitely so. Uh, Siobhan, um, mm-hmm. how much of an influence has the likes of Katie Taylor been on your career? To uh, I mean, she's she's got a massive profile for the professional game and especially yeah. that she represents Ireland. Ah, uh, look, I mean, obviously, like, like I started boxing in 2012, so obviously, Katie just won her her gold medal back then. Like, so look, she's she's definitely someone that kicked down the door and 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 made people take notice of women's boxing. And you know, I think without her and without people like Deirdre Gogarty and and Christina McMahon and Lynn Harvey and 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 those women before me, you know, there there wouldn't be such a high profile. Uh, of, of women boxing out there, but obviously Katie is the forebear, and 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 there's you know there's there's many girls and women you know looking at the sport of boxing now and becoming interested because of her. So obviously, I think I think the boxing owes, owes a debt to Katie and and women like her. 
Yeah, can can I ask you? You've already had a pro fight. That must be that must be a huge advantage going into your second. Unlike Kevin, any advice for Kevin going into his uh, first one? Just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Hundred percent enjoy it. I went in. I, you know what? I went in and I boxed to the crowd and I was a bit sloppy, but just you know, ground yourself before you get in there and and enjoy it because you only get one debut and you know it does feel very different this time around for me. It does. There's there's a big difference in the feeling building up to this fight. So. But the debut was a much more, I thought it was exciting and it was, you know, you could, the build up was just, it was a lot more palpable, I suppose. But I would just say, just go in and enjoy it. Like, you know, it's, 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 yeah, it's probably the best feeling. Like, yeah. Kevin, uh, what do you think of that? About it? I suppose that you'd be a bit anxious and a bit nervous going into it. Uh, it's a case of enjoying yourself and uh, embracing that occasion as well. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to try my best to enjoy it now. But um, I guess now it's just. Uh, as you were saying, not to rush into something, you know, that I, be, I guess that's a big mistake someone could make in their debut with all the excitement and the crowd getting behind you. It's all something new. You just don't want to rush into something you don't see coming. Like. I'm sure there'll be a lot of Kerry followers to support you, uh, two boxers. Uh, can you tell us, where's the where's the venue for, for, for these two, uh, two fights? National Stadium in Dublin. All oh, right, and I take it there's a few travelling from Mick Kerry up to support you, Kev? Uh, yeah, I sold out with tickets within the week really um, and that that yeah, must mean a lot as well to have the support you're, you're not alone doing it for Kerry but when you see look out you won't have time to look out I'm sure to the ring to see who's in the in the audience but that must mean a lot to get that sort of support yeah definitely because look when the going gets tough and you hear people shouting you're on and I'm, I'm certain that it's going to make a massive effect like yeah, definitely, definitely. So, and for you, Siobhan, it's a case mm-hmm. of uh, go out and get the job done. Hopefully, and get it done early. Absolutely. Look at look at m- my focus right now is, is 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 the fight on Saturday, and my focus and and my plan is to is, is to beat this girl, and you know by whatever means possible. Like you know that that that's boxing. You, you got to be ruthless. You got to get in there and 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 kill or be killed. I suppose that yeah. like that's the whole point of it. Like you know, so my my plan is to. It's to make it 2-0 and, 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 and I will do that on Saturday. Great stuff, great confidence. Uh, thanks a million to both of you, both Kevin Cronin and likewise Siobhan O'Leary off Kerry, uh, who will be boxing yeah. this Saturday thanks night. The very best look and thanks for coming on Terrace yeah. Talk, folks. Thank you. Thanks a million. Yeah. Bye-bye. Great, great stuff and that's uh, Kerry's only professional boxer is of course Cass Maines, Kevin Cronin and likewise Siobhan O'Leary of Kilcommon. We've plenty more after this break. Terrace Talk on Radio Kerry. Brought to you in association with BrianJames.ie. Leading the way for stylish menswear in Kerry. Did you're very welcome back here to Terrace Talk. Now we change disciplines again. We speak about soccer. And uh, I'm delighted to have in studio a very talented bunch of players at different levels representing Kerry at the moment. And likewise, I have the Darna Heron, of course, the FAI development officer here in Kerry. And I'll just give you those names and we'll try and remember them here on Terrace Talk tonight. Of course, I have Brian O'Regan, who's the under-19 keeper. Ryan Guerin at under-17. Of course, he plays a centre-back. Connor Kerrins at under-15, uh, centre-midfield. And Nathan the Heron under 13 at right back, and Andrew Cairns the centre forward on the 13 left. You're all very welcome to Terrace Talk, lads. Thanks. Darren Heron, tell me about these young men. First of all, I take away from every level, from under 13 to under 19, uh, for Brian, where Brian is is a keeper. How many how many guys involved, or how many young men are involved at all these levels? We have four squads this year, Tim. It's the first time we've four. So you've uh, the Kerry School Boys League are doing the under 13s and the under 15s, and the Kerry District League then are doing the under 17s and 19s. So there's 20 on each squad. So 80 across the county. Uh, first year ever. It's 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 heady times. You know, if you go back a few years, and you ask me, would this going to happen? I would have said no. But here we are, and you couldn't have us in at a better time because. Uh, four of the groups were playing the weekend and 3-1 so it's been a great weekend for, for soccer for these guys. And how has it grown so much? You know, is it, is it the profile it has that, uh, we won't say at international level but watching the Premiership watching the different, I, I suppose players going over and playing in the different divisions, even Kerry players doing quite well in recent years as well. Is that the draw for football in Kerry? I think the imp- I think that's always been there, Tim. There's always been latent uh, talent in Kerry, no matter what sport. Uh, you know, you, you you know yourself. You're, you're listening to it every weekend. But I suppose on a national front, uh, a decision was made to implement all these underage structures and these underage leagues by by Rue Doctor, our uh, high performance director, and hence we've kind of embraced it in Kerry. 
and you know for for someone who's been around the game a long time it's made perfect sense for me for the lads to to enter all these different age groups and with the success it's only a matter of time and that success will continue to come because as, as we all know there's there's nothing like a a good carry sportsman no matter what code they're playing and we've got plenty of good players down here as well yeah definitely and some of those players that go off and do very well even the around the table here tonight and brian o'regan under 19 you can move closer there to the mic brian yeah, uh the next level for you is probably we're talking about senior level but what, what, what tell me about the under 19 squad at the moment i take it it's quite strong yeah it's a quite strong quite strong squad at the moment we've a uh, a nice knit bunch of players now and uh, our results haven't been going our way but uh, have, you, have you many games played already Brian? We have three games played already we had uh, Bray at home Shamrock Rovers at home and just uh, Saturday we had Wexford at home and like I've seen Darren has often brought players in here over the last couple of years that the experience of playing against these top class clubs that must mean a lot for players I suppose to, to develop yeah I, if, for me personally anyway it's been my first year involved with the League of Ireland I was involved with uh, the different codes previous years, and uh, I got I got the chance to, to step up to this level. And I said, "Why not?" And you're you, with comfort. Uh, I hope you weren't taking the ball out of the net too many times in recent times, or yeah, it was only, you won't blame the defence anyway. It was once at the weekend, so it's not too bad. Yeah, once, is, once is not too bad if you can get one back. Uh, and beside you, of course, I I've Ryan Gairn, under seventeen. Uh, Ryan, the under seventeens have you played centre back? How have they been doing so far? Yeah, we've been doing well so far, like two wins out of four, not too bad. And a talented bunch. Who, who's training the the under 17s? Uh, we have Billy Denny, of course. Oh, uh, Billy, sure, brilliant player. Been with a number cross channel and uh, with a number of clubs here in Ireland. That that means a lot as well to have a quality. What what's Billy like as a as a coach? Oh, he's great. He has all the experience playing at this level, like, and just take anything from him. And all I, the advice. And I, I take it your fellow players then have huge respect for Billy. Oh yeah, of course. Like, sure, we all know him. And he's, he's the game. of course, he's a Trillie man as well. He was a very talented GA player back in the his minor days. But uh, that experience and what's it like to to play the quality clubs that uh, when you're representing Kerry? Oh, it's great for Kerry just to get out there and play the top clubs. I'm sure, that's what everybody wants to be doing. What's uh, what's life like for a centre back? Have you a tough, robust centre forwards coming at you? You are you well able to handle them? Yeah, not too bad now. Um, I have a young man over here. And it's Andrew Cairns, centre forward. Andrew, are you enjoying your time with the under 13s? Yeah. How long have you been in? What age are you? I'm 12. 12, so you'll have, a, you'll have another year you're underage. And you're playing centre forward. Are you a goal opportunist? Do you, have you any goals scored? Have, have you played so far? Yeah, we've like played one game against um, Cove Ramblers and we won 2 1. We won two, one. Brilliant. Were you, on the, were you on the score sheet? No. Did you set it up an assist, I suppose? No, you play no. centre forward. You enjoy that side of it. Yeah. You take yourself, one day you'll be Robbie Keane, I take it. And of course, uh, beside you, I have a man, wh- what's it like having a dad with the experience he has at playing it and likewise his position? Does he put pressure on you, Nathan the Heron? Of course, uh, you're Darren's son. <laughs> Sometimes, but not really. Like He only tries to help me out and make me improve as a soccer player. So. And uh, no different to the other boys here, Nathan, that you have to listen to your coaches. I'm sure that's well drilled into by the man beside you. Yeah, well, that's how you learn and become a good soccer player. So. And you're playing right back? Are you there by... Is that where you want to play in defence or would you prefer to have more of a, a creative role in midfield or an attacking? I was a midfielder, but sure. I, I was always... Were, were, were they stuck for a right back, were they? <laughs> they did they no. put you back there? No, I just always liked defending and I said, sure, I'm right for this, so I might as well go right back and see how I'll... It isn't. Now I play Kerry as a right back, so... And you enjoying, and of course you'd be with Andrew in that under-13 t- uh, team. Yes. So you have your, your first win. Uh, and I also have Connor Cairns, the under-15. Uh, you can move close there, Connor, to the mic. How are you enjoying your football with uh, the Kerry under-15s? Uh, good, it's going very good now. Uh, one win out of two. Unlucky to lose that long, 2-1. And no different to the boys. It's a great experience when you represent... What's it like to represent Kerry? Uh, it's great great pride in Jersey and you just want to play soccer and where are you from um, Connor? are you from town yes you're from Tralee yes and I take it you started soccer or football at a very young age yeah under six level oh sure you're very talented and you play centre midfield yes are you the guy you know that creates does the link with everyone with defence and attack yeah try to be anyway try to be Darren they're all modest young men but I take it they all enjoy it Tim, you have to enjoy it, don't you? No matter what age you are, if especially when they're so young, um, it, it's 
like they're playing in elite football and there's a certain pressure and as Deval said there's a great pride in it as well but uh, look if, if you're not enjoying sport there's only one uh, solution to that they'll stop playing so we've got to and like Conor they started at under C I, I suppose the imperative to start as early as possible no different to any other discipline that you you know from a very young age you'll have that advantage there's two groups you know some some would suggest the earlier you get them the better some would suggest that you know it's it's a natural thing they have to once they love the sport that they're playing They'll, they'll embrace it and they'll practice it. Practice is the key, Tim. You know, you know yourself no matter what sport you want to play. If you, don't, if you don't put the hours in yourself and that comes from the love that you have for it, you're not going to, you're not going to progress. And these boys all seem to, they seem to be enjoying it at the minute anyway. Yeah, and going through the different age groups. Uh, for you, Brian, uh, what's, what's training like? Oh, what's, the, what's the effort in training? Are you out a couple of nights a week, I take it? Yeah, we're out two nights a week, Tuesday and Thursday. Training itself is probably the easiest part to say the least it's more the things outside of training such as trying to get gym work in uh, keeping a clean diet and balancing the books as well on top of it to study do you find it's a, a different what, what class are you now uh, I'm in sixth year I'm a leaving you, cert oh very important and where, where are you going to school uh, Mount Hawk Mount Hawk so it's a, a diff- I know what it's like in my own house yeah. uh, Mount Hawk that sort of effort that sort of balance is a very difficult that when you play when you're representing a carry it's a different level yeah, it's, so it's, not like club level yeah it's an, it, it is a it is a big difficulty but it look it's, I suppose it's part of the game it's part of the life and it's just something that you have to you have to get on with there's, you can't really complain too much there's not much that can be done so if I if you want to play play at this level of football this elite if you want to be an elite footballer You've all Irish, have, have you? Make it You've work. all Irish in the next couple of days, have you? I do, yeah. I won't, I won't be, be too worried about them, though. <laughs> You'll be fine. Is it difficult? Because it's a, it's a very important academically as well that, you know, years like this you have to take advantage of. But your season is probably right in the middle of it now. So you have to. it's very hard for that commitment to be given, I suppose. It is, yeah. But look, as long as we enjoy it, it does, enjoying it is half, is half the battle. It makes it And you'll makes be nice and fresh easier. then after being out in that fresh air going in doing the exams. You'll be, you'll be fine. For you, Ryan, is it the same way? Studies, what, what year are you in in school? I'm in third year. Third year. So you, you have exams as well, I take it? Yeah, I do. Yeah, so wh- wh- is it difficult for you? And Do you find a difference as well moving up to a level where uh, the likes of Darren is in charge and the different coaches playing with Kerry? Is it difficult to play in with your club? There's, there's more of a commitment, isn't there? Yeah, there is more of a all right, but it's not so much that. It's, you know, you need to be good for a carry to be at peak condition for every match. And do you find, do you watch your diet and watch your discipline outside? Yeah, what uh, Ryan mentioned about uh, being in the gym, do you have to do that bit extra outside of the training? You would be the set training you have with the with carry? Well, of course, it's a big step up to carry now. And doing any big extra by yourself will always help in that regard. What about uh, you, Connor? I take it you want to move up or along the ranks, no different to speaking to the boys playing at under-17, under-19 level. Is that the dream, coming from t- under-13, under-15 to, to to the next level? Yeah, the dream is to go all the way up and even t- for Kerry to get a senior team for one day, to play with Kerry senior in League of Ireland. It's just a dream. Yeah, I must talk to, to Connor about that. What about you, Nathan? I take it you want to move up along the ranks. Wh- wh- what team do you follow? Man United. Oh, sure. You're in good company here tonight. You're very welcome to Terrace Talk anyway. Uh, and is that your dream one day that uh, somebody will spot you out there, your talent, and maybe go further than Kerry? Hopefully. That's a big, big dream, but hopefully it could get smaller and smaller. And I take it it's every player's dream. What about you? Uh, it's even Andrew. I nearly forgot your name. Andrew Cairns. Is that your dream to one day play uh, at even international level for Ireland? Yeah. And you're going to move up along the ranks like the boys here beside you? Yeah. Under 13, which one, around the table now, which, and which one was the best soccer player? You've seen them all now, I take it. You go and watch the under 15s, the under 17s, the under 19s. Um, Who's the best one? Probably Brian, because he's the oldest. Oh, he's the oldest, yeah. You won't take on the... the <laughs> Dar- they just mentioned it there, and, and, and for a young boy like Connor to say that, that is, is, is that the dream dream for the likes of you to have a, a team competing at senior level? Absolutely. Is this, yeah. this is the whole structure of this, isn't it? Well, yeah, this is why this decision was made, I suppose, for, for cities like Dublin and Limerick and Cork. They have the first team, but they didn't have the underage structure until uh, recently. And for us, 
we didn't have anything so we're kind of building from the foundations up and you know we started with 17s then we went 15s 17s and this year we've 13s 15s 17s and 19s so the natural progression please god in time will be we'll have a first team uh, in, in the electricity league and we'll be is there a target is there is there a year set that when you think that you might be ready for that or is it uh, is there outside moves to make it happen I suppose it comes down to money Tim doesn't it, it, it everything's on the table as as the people I keep uh, I keep poking in the ribs to keep this on the table but yeah it's on the table and once once these guys keep showing up and they keep winning and you know you're not uh, you're competitive with all the age groups up along it's only a natural progression that when you do take that step into the to the first team and the senior setup, you you should be competitive as well because outside of the coming into training the likes of your own son there Nathan and Andrew at, at that very young age that tender age for looking at the long term do people speak to them outside of training and focus them that in the future they could arrive at this destination or is they too young to take that on board? For me, they're, they're probably a little bit too young. I think for me, especially the two youngest lads, it's, it's just about getting them in. You know, they, they left, what time do you leave? Truly, 10 o'clock Saturday morning to go and play in Cove and back on Sunday. So that's a long day for a 12-year-old. When they win, they all come off the bus and they're really, really happy. But as, as I know, there's good days and there's bad days. But it's just acclimatising, I think, to the level of the football and the travelling and things like that. Now, they're... Their division is regionalised, so there's not so much travelling. But like um, myself and Brian, we're off to Galway on Saturday, which is a, a long day. Uh, Ryan mentioned there uh, about uh, Billy Dinehy. Billy Dinehy being about how his title for a start. Uh, he is the under seventeen manager. Under seventeen he's manager. Working, he's working with the Kerry. That is a, that's well. a huge coup as far as Kerry soccer is concerned. Uh, he's a great guy. I mean, he, he's come back and. There isn't a sentence comes out of his mouth that he's not saying I'm trying to I'm trying to put uh, I'm trying to put Kerry on the map and I'm trying to give something back. You know, he's a great fella. He wants to see us succeed. You know, he, he came in with me last year. Uh, personally, I didn't know the guy, but it was fantastic to have him around, and he just gets the attention of the players. So this year, when we had the two teams, it made perfect sense that Billy would take the 17s and I'll progress to the 19s. And you can see already the, 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 the affection the players have for him. And he's a tough taskmaster as well, but he's getting the results and, and he's attracting players to us. And so. the experience both across Channel and with big clubs here in Ireland as well. That, that's huge as far as uh, having a local guy as well. He's not somebody coming from the outside. It's great guidance for them. You know, because every one of them will want to play for Manchester United and Real Madrid and wherever else the, their, their dreams would take them. But when you have someone who's he's been there and he's bought the T-shirt and he's in, and he's within touching distance and he's and he's very practical man and he gives them great guidance. So I mean, we we couldn't have a better fellow around. Any of these boys around the table got any trials anywhere? With the big clubs, uh, nothing yet. But I mean, th- that's that's one of the offsets of this this these leagues that if if you come in, you train hard, you play well you will come to somebody's attention I mean, Keenan Cooney scored four goals for the 15s on Saturday that's guaranteed to get a t- get a- get attention for him because someone will ask how's that boy scored four goals so, you know, once fellas keep doing that they'll come to people's attention uh, Well, you might see it probably at under 13 level but for the likes of Connor and the boys here Ryan and, and, and Brian is there guys uh, is there scouts watching these guys? Oh, yeah. Absolutely Absolutely, yeah. They're, it's 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 probably made their job a lot easier. I mean, if you say Dublin, what would it be, Tim? Forty-five minutes from from England, they'll fly in. Uh, the 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 fixtures are, are common knowledge, and they could come and see three or four games across a weekend at two or three different age groups. And, and you wouldn't even be aware as a management team that they'd be there. There's a person sitting in the stand, and you don't. These guys don't need to be aware of that, but they they are being monitored, yeah. But you're probably aware of it after tonight, lads. But you have to think about your own team. And for a tactician-wise, how's Billy rating as well? He obviously brings something new that you wouldn't have experienced before. Uh, Billy's great with the management. He's always going to go for the game, go for the win. And that's the biggest difference in his style. And right, he, he's a ball player as well. We see him for his times in the different clubs he played with. But he likes it on the ground, doesn't he? Uh, a very a very talented. Is that what you set your skill in, that uh, being good on the floor, as we say? Yeah, we're always trying to play out properly the best way we can try and attack more create more chances and score more goals um, Brian is that day gone the loof and the ball down past midfield to centre forward I take it you, you all play it in the ground now it is yeah you you try your best to play out of the back and build up and there like you said being able to hit the ball 70 60-70 metres 
while it is important more in today's game it's more importantly to be able to do it accurately but like, yeah like this, like uh, Ryan was saying the system of play is we'll try to build up from the back and create chances score goals Brian what about somebody your age now that uh, are you looking still to be I know that Darren would don't want me to dwell too much on that about being aware of scouts do you still you feel you have a chance of being spotted out there to go further or are you just doing it for the enjoyment of playing with Kerry yeah of course I'd like to I'd like to progress in the game but my my undivided attention now is on Kerry District League and under 19 League of Ireland and how well I can do during the season everything outside that era it's it's a blur it can be a blur. a blur it can be a blur and it can be a bonus what about you Connor? Uh your dream is no different to the boys uh, no different to the lads around the, the table that you'll be spotted one day outside of having the honour of playing with you presently with Kerry yeah hopefully one day you never know what will happen you might get scouted from anywhere but you go out and who's coaching you? Who's coaching the under fifteen? Um, Danny Diggins and Jimmy Clancy. All right, and guys well experienced in the in the soccer yeah. side. How do they rate as coaches? Very good, very fun, very hard working. Always wants us to do our best. You're in that first eleven every time after saying that. And what about you, Nathan? Who's uh, who's your coach? I'm JP Mullins and Joe. And how you can move closer there to the mic, Nathan. Uh, and you're enjoying it with them. You're, they say always at your age, listen to your coaches for further development. That's going to happen, isn't it? Yeah, well, if you want if you want to improve, you listen to coaches. If you don't, you don't listen to them. What about the boy beside you? Is he, is he a decent player at that level? You're the guy mind in the house. How's he as a striker? Well, he scored loads of Andrew. goals for Park and hopefully he can add to carry as well to score loads Do you put pressure on him to get scores? Does he, is he good with the assists? Well, he's well. He's playing in the midfield now, but sure, he's a goal scorer. He's a goal scorer. Uh, Dan, you look at those boys around you, and they're they're the delight of their world. Is is there is you look at the football side, at the GA side, the hurling? There's lots, especially in the town of Tralee. There's no different to basketball. The weekend is it very difficult with all the the draws for a young boy now because everyone wants to, the under thirteen to play Gaelic football. Is it? Can you do both? The season, I know the way the season works, or is it very difficult with the way the game has gone? If they're representing Kerry, it's very hard to commit somewhere else. Very difficult time-wise, Tim. Is it like all of the groups would train twice a week and have a match, and just even Nathan's experience uh, on Saturday, you know, once he came home and he was delighted, you could tell on Sunday and even today that he's a little bit fatigued from the match because it is that that, that next level um, that... Uh, their, their bodies just needs to acclimatise with us. You know, the 19s probably recover a lot faster than the younger ones, but it's difficult. And look, we're all after the same pool of players. There's only so many to go around. But, you know, we always felt, uh, I suppose, if we were going to serve soccer properly, that we needed to put these pathway in places for the lads that just want to choose soccer and uh, come in and enjoy it and play at a high level. The club structure in Kerry... Uh, it's it's going to be to the benefit of uh, a Kerry team. How strong is that in, in Kerry at the moment? Well, look, we wouldn't be here, Tim, if the club structure wasn't wasn't doing its job. Um, there's some fantastic work, great people doing so many hours at their clubs, and you know, elite football doesn't exist without a, a huge uh, uh, structure of the the um, the club side underneath. And you know, it's a credit to them, and that's where we get these players from. And they're good players; they're able to play. And we just we top it up every week with with a bit of coaching, but uh, it's all the hard work is done by the clubs, absolutely. And I take it uh, the clubs they're, they're looking for members the whole time out there, and uh, there's there's a fee there there, but you have to you have to recruit. Yeah, I think the, the, the club scene is very strong in terms of numbers wise, Tim. Uh, they're, they've they've got some fantastic facilities which is attracting uh, lots of boys and the girls game is starting to grow as well we've a bit of a push on ourselves over the Easter to try and get more girls participating and that's starting to grow now with clubs embracing the, the girls side of the game uh, and rightly so so they're obviously doing good work if they weren't doing good work those people wouldn't be coming through the gates so look long may that continue Darren a quick word uh, Ireland's game against Gibraltar uh, it wasn't it was like watching paint dry I take it I didn't see it. Tim. We were playing. We were playing Wexford above, and I didn't get. It a wasn't chance. pretty viewing Even anyway, pretty and it was very difficult. They were on about the the surface, the wind at we, times. Were, it was always going to be a difficult place to go. Look, as Mick said, and he, he said it quite bluntly, you get the three points, and you can argue the toss after that. You know, if we if we had come away with a, a loss or a draw, it'd be even worse. But look, first game in, 
we'll take the three points we'll move on as he said there's plenty of room for improvement and you have Georgia tomorrow tomorrow night, night. Yeah. Uh, will anything change as far as Mick McCarthy is concerned for that I couldn't see it changing that swiftly Tim unless there was a knock or an injury you know I, I think he'll, he'll probably just reinforce whatever the game plan was on Saturday and try and implement it maybe a little bit better uh, on, on Tuesday night and uh, the biggest problem probably and not an out and out striker as a recognised striker is that a difficulty for you you know it's very important you could have the most stubborn defence which he will have anyway because of where he's background Mick McCarthy and the bit of creativity in midfield but we've no real hard to find you know I was only they're so hard to find the only fellow that you would see he's only a young fellow but he scored two goals for the 21s Adam Ida from Cork uh, uh, I think it was yesterday uh, he seems to be a fellow who's he, you know that that player Tim that knows where the goal is and the ball invariably ends up in the back of the net when he gets a chance and he seems to be the next fella coming through but they're hard to find aren't they Are we given, not giving the credit then to Robbie Keane for what he did something like 60, 67 goals and we, we only realise it now when there's a drought It's always the same isn't it you know everyone moaned that he didn't work hard enough and he was a this and that and, but you're like when you take his goals out of your international team then all of a sudden you go where are they going to come from and we haven't had it you know Do, Will we struggle to get out of this? Will we struggle to qualify? I don't know I think you know, I'm trying to be positive, Tim. You know, a new man, he's a, he's, a, he's a good man. I think he's been brought into steady the ship and hopefully, you know, we, we get that win tomorrow night and we just take it as it comes, I think. Take it yeah, as. definitely so. Uh, lads, you're absolutely brilliant tonight. You, you're famous after tonight now, after being on Terra's Talk Lights. I have to say that. Darren, thanks for bringing these guys in. Uh, you're doing great work and it's well acknowledged. And, uh, well, I want to thank you all, lads. Uh, of course, Ryan Gairn, uh, Brian O'Regan. And I have to look this way again. It's for Andrew Cairns. Like Likewise, Nathan Ahern, who's Darren's son. Likewise, Connor Cairns. You're brilliant. And, uh, well, listen to your coaches and uh, be very disciplined and you'll do very well. And uh, thanks, Millen, for coming on Terrace Talk tonight. Thanks to everybody who contributed to us tonight. Tonight was a very, very busy programme. Uh, delighted for, uh, of course, the Garvey Strelly Warriors on their Super League win. Delighted to have them in studio tonight. And uh, best luck to our kingdom uh, next weekend. And, uh, well... Tonight is going to be, I suppose, hopefully the start of a very bright future uh, for these guys. I want to thank um, Matthew Green, who was on sound, Eamon Hickson, who produced. Until next time, this is Tim Minehan saying goodbye.